How would you grade our infrastructure right now uh, in terms of response? Well, I would say what we're building is really great. Uh, how built it is and how ready people are to use it, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, obviously, in a situation, epidemic or pandemic, uh, going into a place with lots of other infected people is a bad idea, uh, especially if you can be treated virtually. So folks that are members of Firefly or Teladoc or other stocks I know you talked about earlier, uh, they're going to do better. Uh, and our infrastructure can flex our virtual infrastructure can flex up much more easily than hospital beds and emergency rooms can flex uh, up. Uh, and most of the treatment is stuff that can be delivered uh, at home as well. Uh, things we can do right now, of course, we can get flu shots and wash our hands and fist bump. But, but that, that consultation that's digital now, this yeah. will be the first real test of that's that right. at scale. That's right. And I'm very interested in digital uh, care delivery. I think that... Uh, we have enormous bloat uh, in terms of physical plant uh, as we look around that beautiful old building hi hiding behind the, you know, the screens here. And, you know, it's sort of an obsolete thing, but we're in it for the showpiece. Hospitals in many ways have a similar, you know, kind of sweetness, but, but uselessness in, especially in areas of low grade infectious disease that swell up and, and contract. But uh, in emergency situations, that's another thing. Well, no, even in an emergency pandemic, you know, when we go from epidemic to pandemic, which very likely we will, it's a matter of, you know, terminology, but it's, it's in the U.S. It's, uh, it's silent for 14 days before it speaks, so it's very hard to imagine not. So far, we don't have a lot of cases, but uh, virtual medicine, actually, like, what you get in a hospital, right, the diagnostic equipment is increasingly small and digital. Your last guest was talking about the test, which could be administered at you know, literally delivered on Amazon, um, there's more and more and more that uh, really w allows us to unbundle what we think of as the hospital. Um, not today and not for everything, wow. certainly not for a bombing, which, you know, I'd want to be nowhere else but Boston Mass if I'm going to be in a mass, you know, mass casualty or somewhere like New York because of those hospitals. But most of what we face are socially determined or, uh, uh, or infectious, infectious diseases that are better treated virtually. So you're, you, you come from the healthcare world, you're in the healthcare world. What are folks around you in that environment, CEOs or you know, doctors that you're talking to saying about the risk here in the U.S. of coronavirus? Well, I think you know, the one thing that everyone does is sort of go to worst case and say, like, are we, how, how resilient are we to that? And it's sort of a really bad flu, and we've, we do that every year. Uh, and the basic attack pattern is a known one. Try to encourage people to get flu, uh, to get flu shots and, and disinfect themselves. This is sort of 10x the virulence, so maybe try 10, 10 times harder, but the same message. Uh, do a lot of biosurveillance in the beginning. If somebody might have it, send them for testing. Not because it'll make them any better, but because it will... Hey, a stock went up. Uh, <laughs> Good one. Um, but because that... Got, the applause is a 44-year a veteran is retiring today. Oh, beautiful. Yes. He made it. <laughs> um, your point, though, about uh, virulence and washing hands... Yep. Um, and getting the flu shot. Yeah. Getting you... Get, so that you're not in the hospital to begin with. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then we, we send people for testing early on, and we do that with every flu cycle, to make sure we can track it, check its type, see if our virus, if, if our antivirals are working for it. But once it's spread, once we all are kind of getting the flu, right. the test doesn't matter anymore. And this will be very similar. And similarly with the stock market, once we sort of have it I know. and we're all infected and we know whether, you know, we've overused, we've kind of used stimulus as a lifestyle drug here of late. So does that, do the margin calls and the debt calls hurt us more than we thought? Or we, do we absorb that? And then it's like, all right, you know, it's coming through, it'll go through, it'll go through again next year, and okay. Well, that is why our market, of course, is reacting. It's in large part to the uncertainty. Right. At what point do you think, Jonathan, we're going to have more certainty? I mean, I would assume you have a lot of questions, as we all do, just right. about simple facts sure. about the virus that are yet to be fully understood. Right. You know, it's funny. All, Osama bin Laden and well-known attackers all over the world try to do it threes. You know, the first one, you're like, I got that. And the second one, whoa, you know. And by the time the third punch comes... Uh, you sort of had enough. And so I keep thinking, you know, first one is just the supply chain. Second one might be margin calls or debt calls. You know, what might that third punch be? And one thing you guys can do is really think it through so that we feel resilient. It's not the first time we're having that thought. We're not having a black swan moment when that, when that third one comes. The two I'm thinking of are supply chain, I think, not the disease itself, supply chain and, and, and debt on margin calls. And then not a lot of room to land left on the backside because we've been 
plan with debt like a lifestyle drug. How much does the asymptomatic nature of this one uh, change the game? Being, right. a, being able to spread right. and right. having no clue that right. you're sick. Right. There, you know, there's a R, the Rho score, which is the the, 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 the the virulence, the spread rate, like a like a, Ebola is a 50, you know, 5 Like, this one doesn't have to have as high a spread because it can stay, you know, can have a really high spread, excuse me, then it'll be that virulent because it can stay quiet for so long before it speaks up. Uh, and that, you know, will become more relevant. The good news is on the back end, it's a really bad flu. It's not, you know, bleeding out of your eyes. Right. That is, I mean, when Mulvaney's on the tape this morning saying it's not a death sentence, that's true. Correct. Right? And in Ebola. fact, the death sentence rates we've been seeing are in China, which, you know, all due respect to China, I'm sure it's great, wholly different healthcare infrastructure than what we've got. You know, seeing them frantically build these tombs, sure. you know, that's not, that's not the kind of hit rate that, that that disease will have here. So do you have concerns about sub-Saharan Africa? Yeah, sure. I mean, every fragile ecosystem when a, uh, you know, when an when a invasive species of any kind comes into a fragile ecosystem, you know, I mean, my heart aches a little. And, and certainly every fragile ecosystem in the world, including China, right, they're not as, you know, down below the level of that roaring economy, which largely is codependent with us, it's a fragile billion people to, or couple. couple. So um, obviously, sure, uh, places that, that get that and aren't ready don't have a lot of infrastructure to absorb it. You know, I spend most of my life complaining about the excess capacity and, and the bloat in medicine. Now I'm like, a little bloat, maybe not so I bad. Know, but, you know, I wonder, these kinds of things can change behavior. It may be that we stop shaking hands, for example. I had my meeting this morning with a longtime friend. I went in for the hug and I got a fist bump. Yeah, you did. But at the same time, I wonder whether you seem to have entered a market in which place your product may be particularly well suited. I mean, That's right. Is there going to be even more growth and changes in behavior as a result of yes. this that potentially help? Right. When, when people actually break down disease, and break down the drivers of healthcare spend in the country. It's a, it's a, you know, we built this system around traumatic injury and infectious disease, but most of the stuff we have is behavioral determinants of health, where a doctor is valuable, but the idea of the stethoscope is complete artifact. Uh, and so, over time, as we go through these cycles and realize how much of the care was treated digitally or virtually through less invasive and less intensive asset intensive things, we'll go, oh yeah, and it'll become the new normal. And so these are horrible. I wouldn't wish this on us or anyone. Uh, but when you take a blow and you recover and you realize what worked, your acceptance of it the next time around goes up.